Hello and welcome to today's lesson on the Young Modulus, which is part of the materials topic in AQA A-level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at understanding and calculating the Young Modulus of a material. So if we've been successful and learned in today's lesson, we should be able to define stress and strain, define and calculate the Young Modulus of a material, and finally derive the Young Modulus from a stress-strain graph, which links into the following part of the AQA A-level physics specification 3.4.2.2 the young modulus now as mentioned previously we can work out many properties of a material from a force extension graph we know that in a force extension graph the gradient of a straight line through the origin gives you the spring constant which is the stiffness of a material and the area under a straight line is the gives you the energy stored in a material due to deformation however the concept of stiffness and the force extension graphs change depending on the dimensions of the material. So for example, the amount of deforming force that needs to be applied on a material to cause an extension is dependent on the dimensions of the material. The amount of extension that is produced by a deforming force acting on a material is dependent on the dimensions of the material. So that tells us that this quantity of grade of stiffness is dependent on the dimensions of the material. So we need to think of in material physics a quantity that can represent uh, the ability for material to deform regardless of the dimensions of its shape, an absolute quantity. Now this can be achieved not by doing a force extension graph, but rather by doing a stress strain graph. So looking at the stress placed on an object and the strain that it causes. Because the amount of stress applied on an object can be considered independent of the dimensions of the material, whilst the amount of strain produced by a material can be considered independent on the dimensions of the material. Now in a stress strain graph our gradient is the young modulus which is independent of the dimensions of the material so the young's modulus of a material is consistent regardless of the dimension of the material shape it's an absolute quantity so it doesn't matter if the material was formed into a sphere a triangle a cube or a sheet it would always have the same young modulus now the young modulus can be calculated by measuring the stress and strain of a material because the young modulus is equal to stress over strain and is used as a measure of the stiffness of a material and is used in the real world by engineers to make sure materials can withstand sufficient forces in different situations. So let's consider stress and strain. Stress is a more absolute quantity which considers the deforming force while strain is a more absolute quantity when considering the extension of a material. So the tensile stress is the force applied on a material when considering the area over which it is applied to. Now it can also be referred to as the deforming pressure acting on an object. So the tensile stress is the pressure a material is under which is the force per unit area. So stress in newtons per meter squared is equal to force in newtons over area in meters squared but we can also measure stress in the units of pascals because stress is just another version of pressure. So once a material is put under stress it will show a strain. Now a strain is a measure of how much the material has extended based on its original length due to the stress that was acting upon it. So it doesn't matter if this, the forces acting upon the object are compressive or are tensile, it tends that tensile forces have positive values and compressive forces have negative values, but both can cause a strain. So a strain is a measurement of how much a material has stretched. So stress pulling on a wire causes strain. So strain is a ratio between the original length of the material and the amount it has extended by. Now strain has no units as the two units of length, the extension and the original length, cancel out each other. So strain is equal to extension over original length. Now whilst I've given the SI units of the extension and original length, meters, in theory as long as you keep the units of the extension and original length consistent, you'll get the correct value for strain out. Now the Young modulus is an absolute measurement of the stiffness of a material. It tells us how much a material will extend under a given pressure. So Young modulus is equal to stress over strain. Now we know stress is force over area and strain is extension over length. So now we can pop this into the equation for Young's modulus and then rearrange to tidy it up and make it a bit nicer and say the Young modulus is the force times by the original length over the extension times by the area. Now the, the Young modulus has a unit of Newton's 
moment per meter squared or the Pascal. Now this is the same unit as stress since strain has no unit so does not contribute to the unit of the Young modulus. Now there are many different examples of the sizes and magnitudes of a Young modulus of different materials. So you can have DNA which is about 10 to the 8 Pascals, dry spaghetti 10 to the 9 Pascals, cotton thread 10 to the 10 Pascals, plant cell walls 10 to the 11 Pascals, carbon fullerene nanotubes 10 to the 12 Pascals. What you tend to find is the stiffer the object the higher its Young modulus. Now to calculate the Young modulus of a material you've got to measure both the stress and the strain of the material in an experimental situation. But to analyse this further you will place the results in a stress strain graph. So we can draw the stress strain graph as follows with stress on the y axis and strain on the x axis. Now the gradient of the line is delta y over delta x or stress over strain which we know is equal to the Young modulus. But you can only calculate the Young modulus as the gradient of the straight line section of the graph. So you can only calculate the Young modulus when a material is exhibiting elastic behaviour, when a material is below its limit of proportionality. So you can only calculate the Young modulus of a material when the material is following Hooke's law. Now you tend to find stiff materials have a steep gradient because they have a high Young modulus. Now we can we also know that the area under the line is going to be a half times by base times by height, which is a half times by stress times by strain, which we know is a half times by force over extension times by extension over length, which equates to energy over volume. So this tells us the area under the line of a stress strain graph is the strain energy or the energy stored per volume in the material, or it is the strain energy in one meter cubed of a material. Now we can also draw a graph of a stress strain uh, of the stress strain graph, sorry, of a material which does not always act elastically, which or which doesn't always follow Hooke's law. So here is a typical stress strain graph for a metal material such as copper. Now these types of stress strain graphs are found for ductile materials. Now ductile materials are ones that have a high plastic deformation before they break. Now there are a number of different features of a stress strain graph you've got to be aware of. Now the first one is the ultimate tensile stress. Now this is the highest value of stress on the graph. Now it's the maximum stress a material can withstand and it is sometimes referred to as the strength of a material. Now engineers have to consider the UTS when designing a structure. They need to make sure that the stress on a material will never reach the UTS when conditions change. Another key part of a stress strain graph is the breaking point. So the last value of strain on the graph is called the breaking point. This is when the bonds between the molecules separate completely and the material strap, snap. Sorry. So engineers have to consider the breaking point when designing the structure. They need to make sure the stress on a material will not reach the breaking point when conditions in that particular structure change. Now it's important to note that strong materials should have a high UTS and a high breaking point. Now the next part of the stress strain graph you've got to be aware of is the yield point. Now the yield point is the point where the line dips and it shows your material giving way. So this means the material is weaker and can't withstand much more stress. So at the yield point the material suddenly starts to stretch without any extra load being added on it. So this is the stress at which a larger amount of plastic deformation takes place with a constant or reduced load on the material. Now in the yield point there's actually two sections. You've got the weakening which is when the material weakens suddenly and starts to stretch and you've also got the flow which is where the la a large strain is achieved as the cross-sectional area of the material decreases rapidly. And the last two values you've got to be aware of on your stress strain graph are your limit of proportionality and your elastic limit. The elastic limit is the point where the material will no longer go back to its original shape after the force has been removed. The limit of proportionality is when the force and extension are no longer proportional. So for most materials this is not the same point. So the limit of proportionality is slightly before the elastic limit. So at the limit of proportionality the material stops obeying Hooke's law but would still return to its original shape if the stress acting on it was removed. At the elastic limit the material would no longer return to its original 
two-dimensional shape once that stress has been removed. Now we've just looked at a stress strain graph for a ductile material, but what about a brittle material? Well, a brittle material would have the following stress strain graph. Now it will obey, it will obey Hooke's laws at lower stresses, which you can observe because there's a straight line through the origin at the first section of our graph. But when the stress suddenly reaches a certain point, the material will fracture and will, without much plastic deformation. So you get lots of elastic deformation in a brittle material, but then no plastic deformation. Now examples of these brittle materials can include chocolate bars, glass and pottery because they don't tend to stretch before they break, they just suddenly actually just snap and fracture. So what have we looked at in today's lesson? We've looked at the Young's modulus, which is the tensile stress over tensile strain, which is F times by L over A times by delta L, and we can use stress strain graphs to find the Young's modulus. So if we've been successful and learnt in today's lesson, we should be able to define stress and define strain, define and calculate the Young modulus of a material, and derive the Young modulus from a stress strain graph. So I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson on the Young modulus, which is part of the material topic in AQA A-Level Physics. Thank you very much for watching and as always have a lovely day.